what's going on, boys? Thanks to our patrons and Fiverr customers, arm yourselves, typology stuff. My last two years have been professionally demanding. I've needed to engage my shadow to keep my head afloat. On one side, that means being rougher, doing rough things, and not hiding from them, leaning into them. On the other side, that means accustoming myself to a way of doing things I am not built for and not in my element with. That translates to much organization and confrontation. And I have noticed changes, but I haven't felt the gravity of them, I hadn't felt the gravity of them until recently. A couple weeks ago, I started homebrewing a vampire tabletop system that would work for what we might want to do with it. And it has been a process of streamlining what's there, what we already have, inventing a bunch of new stuff, and then streamlining that, too. And I've been approaching this the way, or in a way, I would approach my job. I.e., intensive record-keeping, keeping everything, keeping everything organized, developing rules that are universal, but also simple, and developing more elegant ways of doing what is already here, tailored to clients' specific circumstances. Except in this instance it would be players, not clients, necessarily. And the problem we're solving being conveying complicated systems simply and engaging with them simply without sacrificing any of the system's complexities. And in some cases, making things more complicated, but not complicated to understand and to interact with. And this is much of what I do with my job. And after coming up with a particularly elegant solution, I realized I was feeling hot and bothered for myself. And I have a difficult but generally high opinion of myself, but I don't normally feel this way. Why am I feeling almost turned on by myself for working Excel good? And what I realized is what I've been doing in this hobby is appealing to TE, I think, as a function. That TE dog in me looks at this and thinks, that is a clever way of getting this goal done. But what's important to note here is I'm not using TE. If you pitted me against a TE user in an efficiency variety contest, they would run circles around me. Because that's what TE does. It finds better ways of doing things. TE is the how or the how better part of what. Whereas TI is the why part of what. However, in this particular instance, I am using TI in a TE flavored way. Or in a way TE would find satisfying. You organized this in such a way I don't need to stress about the imaginary better way it could be organized, because you already did it. It's like your conscious functions performing an act of service for your shadow functions. Because your shadow functions are unconscious, they can't do for themselves, but that does not stop them from observing and thinking and stressing. And in my opinion, that must be part of why your shadow acts out, especially when you repress it. You are sticking someone with claustrophobia into the smallest box possible and hiding them in your closet and expecting them not to freak out and not to try to break out. And in this way, you can almost view your shadow not as the bad part of you, although that is part of it, but more as a human being you are sharing your meat vehicle with, who isn't allowed to put their hands on the wheel, who isn't allowed to speak with you or communicate with you in any direct way, and who, by their nature, 
has at best reservations about the way you do everything. And I imagine their feelings deteriorate when you don't even know they exist, that there are opinions and fears going unaddressed or being spited, and all the worse when you are somewhat aware of them and are actively repressing them. I know you exist, I just don't care or I hate you, and I'll be working actively to do my shit my way tenfold just to piss you off. And then expecting that other person, that silent partner, not to freak out or to get angry and respond in kind. Because your shadow can and will rip the wheel out of your hands sometimes, if you push them far enough. Now, we already know, we've already discussed many times what we think, or the way we handle shadow integration, is not trying to use your shadow functions. That's never going to happen. You are not an INTP with great NI. You are not an INFP with great TI. You are not an ENTJ with great FE. However, you can, and what we do, enter a conversation with your shadow functions, or take efforts to make them feel heard. And you'll know when this is happening because it does feel like a conversation with yourself. A conversation that leads to you doing something outside your wheelhouse. Like if you're an INTP, working a job that requires intensive sense-making and streamlining of messes, organizing people and things, according not to the person's feelings, but to the job's needs, TE, or taking a big risk to help out someone who needs it against every better judgment system you have, FI, or staring at an ass to the point of brain rot because you normally avoid these sorts of things, just for the sensual pleasure, SE. Now, in this is the evolution of these conversations, because it's not just working on communicating with your shadow functions a little bit more and getting outside your wheelhouse. It's more than that now. You do that enough times, and then, on an unconscious level, it becomes working to please your shadow functions. How can I set this up or carry this out, accomplish this goal, in a way my shadow functions will appreciate or that will alleviate some of their stresses? And when you do this, you don't just start seeing benefits you also start feeling benefits. In the former, although I'm still using TI, I'm using it in a TE-flavored way, and I am creating appreciable TE-type results. But more importantly for me, in the latter, I feel good. It feels like a small weight you didn't even know was there dropping off your shoulders. If you're a people pleaser, you know how good it feels when someone gives you an attaboy. And that can be dangerous because people will use that to control you, even though on some level you feel like you need that validation from an other. And when you feel this sort of need for validation, you can feel proud of yourself, usually, but it's not the same. However, when you do something for your shadow, or you do something in a way your shadow would appreciate, or you alleviate one of your shadow's worries well, the validation you feel does feel like it comes from another. Because in a sense it does. It comes from your silent but deeply concerned passenger. And I think, I think this is a way to develop greater internal independence or willpower. Not to need other people to approve of you or to back you, or to see something through when you feel like you're lost. Your shadow has your back because you have its back. It feels like a loving and supportive marriage. 
all happening in the confines of your own head. It feels romantic, like that good feeling in your chest when you do something for someone you care about, or the warm and fuzzies when someone else steps in to take care of you. We've had plenty of those moments over the last couple years. Moments in which, when I don't know what to do, something else steps in and it feels like I'm acting or speaking with someone else's words. And I've seen it most with TE, but that's probably because that's the, or my, nemesis function. Of your functions, that's the one that has the biggest say, or the best ability to communicate with you. Versus your demon function, which is always nightmarish when it comes out, even in the good times. But I'm pretty sure we're making good progress in shadow integration because I noticed this is starting to happen with NI. Even though NI is famously difficult to understand for people who don't have it. And it was slick the way I caught it happening. One of the easiest ways to spot NI generally is in eye movement. And NI types eyes don't move around a lot while they're talking, or when they move their eyes, they move them in slow, deliberate sweeps. A, then B, then C, places they're looking, versus any types whose eyes dart around a lot while they're talking, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But an easy way to spot an NJ or a high NI type without knowing anything else about them is their propensity to stare at people. Now, I link that specific characteristic to high NI and not just NI and SE, because SE types or higher SE types will stare, but they don't do it as much. NJs have a certain look. And the thing I learned about NJ staring or high NI staring is this is not something they do. Like, you'll see people talk about the INTJ stare or the INFJ stare, like this is an action they perform. No, it is necessary to their functioning, and unless they are made aware of it, they're going to be unconscious of it. Unless someone informs them they stare, they aren't going to know, and if they stop staring, they're not going to be able to think as clearly, or to figure things out as well. It takes effort not to stare. And all four NJs have different stares, and INFJs are better at masking it once they're aware of it, but it is a, that just staring generally is a trait common to them all. Now, about a month ago, we made a joke about my unlocking a new spell. That spell being, I stare at you silently and then you tell me things I want to know. And I'm someone who's always been uncomfortable with eye contact. Even when I make eye contact, I get stuck in that concerned area of how long am I supposed to look? Can I look away? Do I look back? When do I look back? How long do I look back? It's a mess. So when I noticed three days in a row I was able to stare at someone and make them tell me things without saying anything, without prompting them to tell me things, I interpreted it as, kind of jokingly, kind of not, magic evil eye shit. And since then, if I were to or I've tried to make myself stare at people, and when I try, consciously, it doesn't work. Yet, if I don't think about it and just let it happen, I will dead stare at people, and silence won't break it. And that's when it hit me. Is this shadow or critic and I beginning to have its say in things? Because I don't need to stare at people to figure things out. And like I said, if I try to do it, it doesn't work. However, when I'm not thinking about it, it just happens, and thus far, I haven't thought about what that might mean psychologically, or in Jungian terms. I know how NI works looking at it from the outside. I know the characteristics of NI. I know how to deal with NI types, sometimes. But I have never been able maybe 10% understanding of how NI might feel from the inside, but I caught myself exhibiting an NI characteristic after 
spending a lot of time working with and communicating with and trying to satisfy D. Is NI what's happening now? And what will SE look like when that starts coming in more clearly? Not just chiming in in conversations or tugging at things, but being present the way TE is beginning to be present. A felt presence. And then what about Demon FI? Demon FI is horrifying when it's trying to do the right thing. I'm not sure, but I'm beginning to think we'll see. We are making noticeable progress in shadow integration. The entire process starts with acknowledging that you do have a shadow and you do repress it. It's uncomfortable, it's ugly. I, I do think bad, unjustifiable actions do have a part in this. Then, once you are aware of it, it becomes conversations, trying to get in touch with it, going outside your wheelhouse to accommodate them or to better relations, sending diplomats to your shadow. And then that progresses into romance. And I think you should look at this stage of development romantically. Now that you have, even if it's difficult to understand, something of a line of communications established, how do you make your shadow happy? Alleviate their stress, impress them, that sort of thing. And then you'll start seeing these big upgrades. Again, I don't think you're ever going to use your shadow functions the way you would use your conscious functions. But I absolutely think your shadow and your shadow functions can start manifesting themselves in your conscious use of your conscious functions. Using an X function in a Y sort of way. Or a Y function, like this weird NI thing, popping up when you aren't thinking about it. Like a Douglas Adams flying thing. And where it goes from here, I don't know, but we're getting somewhere. I can feel it. And if you want to figure out the best way to start this process, I think it worked for me professionally. Working a job that required me to be outside my wheelhouse. So whatever makes you feel uncomfortable, whatever you feel certain you would be overwhelmed in, that also has a degree of prestige to it, do that. You will be uncomfortable, you will be overwhelmed, but you'll adapt, and it'll make your shadow development journey easier because you'll need it. It's insane to me that we've gotten here. This stuff takes time, but it is fruitful when you give it years of time and work. These things do not happen overnight, and they do not happen when you are totally comfortable and in your element. You need to get into your shadow's element, no matter how ugly and uncomfortable that might be. And it's crazy that we got here not from rigorous self-discipline and all of that harder, nastier bullshit, but instead from diplomacy with parts of yourself you don't understand, radical acceptance, and then love. Love conquers all. Romance your shadow. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't.